Hey guys, this is Max with Pure Power Solar, and today we're going to be talking about Point Zero Energy and one of their blog posts talking about their future models they intend to release in 2021. And as you can see, those two models are the Titan 2.0 and the Helios. So if you guys know the Titan, you know that this is a super powerful generator that's already been released. And the, as far as I know, a lot of people really enjoy their systems. But the 2.0 and Helios, I cannot wait to see um, what's in store. And this will give you a little glimpse on what's coming. So just an overview of this chart. This was from Point Zero Energy's blog post. This is literally just a screenshot from their blog post. And there wasn't much information on there besides this chart. There's a couple paragraphs on top and then below this chart. I'll link to it in the description if you want to see this chart for yourself. But this is about all we have so far, which is still a good amount of info. So the original Titan is compared to the two new systems. And if you've already scanned the Helios, you can see it's a little less powerful, both in solar input and inverter power than the other systems. The 2.0 is just an upgraded version of the original Titan, and there's a lot more features that we'll get into. First, inverter power. The 2.0 and the Titan original both have 3,000 watts of inverter power, and the Helios has 2,000 watts. Now, I wish there was a little more information talking about surge power and continuous output, but what I'm assuming is that this is the continuous output or maybe this is the surge power of just one battery. I'm not exactly sure, but for example, the original Titan, if you had two batteries connected to the system, you can get up to 3000 watts continuous power output with the AC ports. With surge power, you can get up to around 6000 watts with two batteries on the original Titan. So maybe this is just all continuous power output with two batteries and then the surge power is to be determined. I'm not sure. But if you just have one battery, obviously you can just cut these wattages in half and that's what you'll get with one battery for continuous power output. So next we'll go to solar input. We can see that the 2.0 and the original both have 2000 watts of solar input, which is, I think this is the highest amount of solar input of any solar generator on the market today. But what's different, you can see that the voltage, the minimum voltage for the 2.0 is 70 watt or 70 volts, which is twice as much as the 35 volts from the Titan original. So this means that you will need to connect more solar panels to the system and you can't really get away with just like two solar panels. So that's something to consider. And this also goes with the Helios, even though it only has a thousand watts of solar, which is still a lot of solar. You'll need to connect a lot of, or at least about four solar panels to the system in order to get this thing going. So battery size, they're all 2000 watt hours. My main question about this is if we're gonna be able to use the original Titan batteries with the 2.0 and the Helios. That'll be really interesting and uh, versatile. So if someone has an old older Titan or the original and wants to get an upgrade, upgraded version and has extra batteries, that could be really convenient. So big shout out to you if someone like that is out there watching. Anyway, we have the voltage of the batteries. This is very important. So the Titan original had 24 volts uh, for its battery, but the 2.0 and the Helios both have 48 volts, twice as much clearly, but what this means is, as I mentioned with the solar input, you will need to have more solar panels than what the original Titan, uh, what its minimum capacity was. And this is interesting. It makes sense. I mean, you can get a ton of wattage from the solar input. And so having a higher voltage battery will just be helpful to probably a lot of people. And I'm assuming that a decent amount of people at least have uh, four solar panels with their system because this is such a large, the Titan was such a large and still is such a huge generator that if you only had two panels, you weren't really doing it justice because it's not really um, charging at what it really is capable of. Anyway, we'll get to the battery types. And this is one of the coolest parts, I think. You have the NMC battery, which is lithium, uh, nickel, manganese, cobalt. So it's a lithium style battery 
and the Titan original has this, but you can also um, have a NMC battery with the 2.0 and Helios. I don't know if they're going to upgrade the batteries for these, but you'll be able to use those batteries. So if someone's already used to them, then you'll be able to do that. And then we have LFP, which stands for lithium iron phosphate battery. So the original has no capabilities with this, but the newer versions do. What's cool about lithium iron phosphate, and I'll just mention two things, the battery is overall just a safer battery. I won't get into specifics, but overall it's a generally safe battery and one of the safest batteries on the market. Next thing is that these batteries have a longer um, cycle life than the NMC batteries. So what that means is that you'll be able to use the battery for much longer than a traditional NMC battery, lithium ion battery. So that is going to be very beneficial and cost effective. So you won't have to buy another battery in however many years that you need it. So as, in terms of an investment, because these are expensive, it's a very nice feature. So next we'll talk about auto battery balancing and then the auto limit and shutdown. So auto battery balancing, what does this mean? Well, if you wanted to balance a battery, so this means if you're trying to add a second battery to the Titan, you would have to go through a process. So you can see that the original Titan says no for battery balancing. Let me show you, this is from their manual for the original Titan. This is what you had to do to add an additional battery pack. You had to calibrate the battery meter, which was eight steps, and then below that, balance the batteries, which included, uh, well, this is just repeating those steps, but you can see there's a decent amount of work involved to be able to add an additional battery. So all of that is basically cut out with the 2.0 in Helios, which will probably be a, a big stress reliever to some, but it's just nice. It's just ease of use, which is very uh, important to probably a lot of people. So battery auto limit and shutdown. So I'll read this. This is another small portion from their blog post, charging the generator. But what it looks like from what they just described in the post is that the battery would just shut down in the original Titan if you were to use it uh, consistently and then use all its power, it would literally just shut down. I'm not sure how long it would take to reboot and get back going, but the 2.0 and the Helios both have limits that you can hopefully set yourself on there so that it, say you want it to discharge until the battery had like 20% battery left. That is very important because not only will you possibly save time from needing to wait until this generator is able to recalibrate if it turns off, you won't have that issue. You will also be able to extend the battery life even further than if you were uh, shutting it down and if you were using it all the way until it shut down every time. So not only is the lithium iron phosphate battery going to be extending the battery life, the limits that you uh, set on the newer generators will be able to extend it even more. So that to me is awesome. Both of those features are very, very uh, impactful in uh, like a long-term financial decision such as this. So parallel units. So you can connect multiple units together with the Titan 2.0, only the Titan 2.0. It says you can have up to six modules, or units connected to each other. So that to me is very impressive. I don't understand why someone would do that, but I'm sure there's people out there that need this. And I'm assuming this is for larger scale operations like um, a backup for a uh, warehouse or maybe a business. I'm not exactly sure, but that's something that's available in the upgraded Titan. Wi-Fi connection. This is really nice to see. I know that Goal Zero has this with their Yeti solar generators, some of them. I know that uh, EcoFlow has this with some of their generators, and I believe Blue Eddy is even getting into the game of having an application for their system. So seeing that Points of Energy is also stepping up their game is really good to see. 
So the 2.0 and Helios will be able to connect via Wi-Fi. I'm assuming that the main feature that you can use this for is for turning on and off ports via your phone at home. And hopefully there's more details uh, with an application that they come out with, but to be continued. And then before I get to the price, I want to talk about the battery weight. So you can see that the difference between NMC and uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries is almost a, a two times, the lithium iron phosphate is almost two times heavier than the NMC battery. So initially I was like wondering what was going on, but now realizing this, I'll, I could see that it, it really doesn't matter all too much. Now I don't have any of these systems, so I can't really speak on direct uh, use, but uh, even with the NMC battery being lighter, I'm assuming that the majority of people with Titan solar generators or intending to purchase one aren't using it to be mobile, aren't using it to, or aren't moving it around a ton. So my assumption is that most people with these systems are using it for their homes, for a backup, uh, for when the power goes out. So seeing this, it was a little shocking at first, but then I realized that it really isn't the biggest deal. I think it would be a bigger deal if you're getting a big system and that would probably be uh, something that you would really need to plan out. But I mean, these are going to be in one place for the majority of people using them. So, I mean, it's still something to consider, but um, I would still stick with a lithium iron phosphate battery, even though it's significantly heavier. So all I have here is a couple questions for you guys. Main question here is, are any of these ideal options for you? So these solar generators, even the Helios, they're still very large solar generators. They're um, probably not mobile, even the Helios. You don't wanna be moving it around a lot. So if that's not what you're looking for, and if you don't need as much power as these systems have, there are a ton of solar generators out there that are lighter, don't have as much power, so maybe you don't need it. Maybe you only need to charge devices if the power goes out. That's why I have a Yeti 200X, which is like a baby solar generator. It is so tiny and it works fine. I don't need to run a TV or do any significant um, power requirements. I don't need any of that. So is it ideal for you? Next, is a gas generator a better option? So a gas generator, although my channel is all about solar, a gas generator is going to be super powerful, way more powerful um, than a even a Titan. The Titan is one of the most powerful ones in the market, but a gas generator, if you need to run your house or run a decent amount of appliances, if the power goes out, I mean, I would still recommend a gas generator unless you uh, only need to run like your fridge or some other things with um, a solar generator. But gas is still a good option as long as you're not using it all the time because that would cost a good amount of money. I mean, I still think that a gas generator is going to be a better option, but it's something to consider for yourself. So lastly, stay tuned for more. I have a lot more videos that'll be coming out and um, hopefully more updates on the video topic today. Subscribe and hit the bell. And um, if you like what I am releasing, like and comment the comments. I honestly learn so much from everyone. There's a lot of very knowledgeable people out there. So comment uh, your thoughts and I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Otherwise, thank you for watching and have a nice rest of your day.